I was 18 years old when I graduated college in England. I grew up in a small town in East Yorkshire and I'd always known from a very young age that I wanted to leave my town and I actually really wanted to travel to America. I'd always had the ability to kind of create ideas and stories in my mind and as soon as I finished college, I hopped in my Fiat Uno and I packed my giant map and I headed to London for job interviews. I'd never been on the motorway before and driving on the motorway was really nerve wracking getting into London and I'd never even been to London before, but it didn't stop me. Every morning I would wake up in the back seat of my car for two, for two days and I would head into the pub bathroom and I would put my suit on, do my makeup and head to my interviews. I knew that I wanted to get a job as far away from England as possible, but I would take anything that kind of came my way. I got offered a few different jobs, but I did take the job in Switzerland, working for a, a royal family, actually, a count and contessa. And I, as I boarded the plane to Switzerland, I realized I'd never been on a plane before. I'd never even kind of processed the fact that they spoke Italian and the whole family spoke Italian and I didn't. But it didn't stop me. Everything about my journey has been kind of that I'm not traditional. I don't check off the boxes before I get started. And I certainly don't let anything stop me. I figure it out as I go along. And I know a lot of people are like that. I've used it to my advantage in business and I've been able to kind of identify these things in other people. If people are strong and determined, then they will be able to fulfill their dreams too. So it's kind of like, to me, it's kind of like alchemy, um, except I'm not, you know, transforming precious metals, I am working with dreams and people's hopes and I'm able to kind of mix all that together into a perfect recipe for success and really help people to fulfill their dreams too. It was five o'clock in the morning and I was woken up to a really excruciating pain in my chest. I didn't know what was going on, but I was aware that for a few days I'd been feeling some discomfort and I wasn't too sure what it was, but as a single mum, you kind of brush yourself under the rug and you just keep going. I looked beside me at my daughter, it was five o'clock and I was thinking, she's gonna be waking up in a couple of hours. If I don't get this checked out, maybe I won't be here. Um, so I called 911 and the ambulance came and got me. Madison, my sweet little daughter, got into the ambulance with me and we were kind of laughing and I was playing off the fact that I was in pain. I got to the hospital and they thought that I was having a heart attack. It was really scary. I didn't know what to do. Um, it was the time of COVID too, so Madison couldn't even be with me in the hospital room. My kids left and I started to really kind of think about what was going to happen if I was having a heart attack? Was I going to die? Was it going to shorten my life? I was taken to another hospital um, and ended up being there for the whole week. It was really unsettling. It was scary. I didn't really know what to think. And I missed my son's 21st birthday and I felt awful about it. As I sat there, I started to think about the good things in my life, how lucky I was. I was 43 years old, I had already started my business and was well into my 11th year of business. I'd been able to create a business that was making me really happy, but was also benefiting other people's lives. It was making other people happy. And I felt really good about that. And as I sat there, I thought, wow, I don't have to say, I hate my life, I hate my job, I need to quit my job, I need to get divorced from my husband. I sat there and I thought, look at, look at all I've created. I've done it. My life is really, really good. Now, how can I make that better for other people too? But while I was in hospital, I did think about that. I did think about, what if I die? Who's gonna look after my children? Who's gonna be there for them? Who's gonna teach them? Who's gonna carry on my business, my legacy? So I kind of felt as though now was a good time for me to really think deeper on my path about my purpose and how I can use my experiences, my struggles to really make other people's journeys more enjoyable. So that's what I've been doing ever since is just really focusing on the future and helping other people to achieve their dreams. For years, I've been focusing on the power of thought and how that can really create the world that we live in. 
I didn't really know too much about it for the longest time, only other than I'd been kind of doing it with envisioning my future when I was just a teenager in England to thinking about America and how I wanted to be here. And slowly, I started to see that all the things I focused on were actually manifesting in my world. I was a nanny in Connecticut, and I'd met this amazing woman who had said to me, actually, you know, you should read the book, The Secret. And so I did, and I kind of, I thought I understood it, but it took a lot of time for it to really sink in for me. But I did realize that when you focus on things that you, whether they're positive or negative, you do bring them about in your life. So I started to really try to become conscious of that. What was I trying to create? What was I trying to do with my business? How was I going to help people? And I started to realize that when I created um, vision boards or when I wrote things down, that it was much easier for me to actually fulfill those things because I was really focused on them. I wasn't just thinking about it. I was now putting it to paper and I was able to focus on the steps and, and what I wanted to be. Um, and it's really important to remember that just as, just as easily as you can create good things in your life, you can also bring about bad things. So to really check in with yourself. Um, I found that when I teach the kids that in my studios or I teach my children that, that you really see a difference. If you're, if you're focused on something negative, then you actually start to see more negative things in your world. So I really help the kids with, hey, you know, how can we create art together? But look, if you wanted to create this, you can also turn it into this. And that's what I've been doing with my business is I actually started it just from a simple drawing of an animal. And from that drawing, I was able to start a brand and actually build a really successful brand from that. So I actually show the kids how you can turn something, just a drawing into a product and into a business. And I think that's really powerful to people to see firsthand that I've been able to do that and that you can too. Man, if I could go back to 21-year-old Hannah, what would I say? Well, 21-year-old Hannah was pregnant. I was pregnant with my son, my first child, and it was hard. Um, I soon after actually became a single parent, and I was living in America, so I had kind of fulfilled that part of my dream. I was in America, but I was pregnant, I was alone, and it was really, really hard. So I would tell myself, it's going to be okay. Everything is going to be okay. It's just really important um, to look at failures as not necessarily failures. They are a stepping stone on the way to your dreams and the things that you really want. I think if you can learn to look at failure as an opportunity for growth, then it doesn't seem so daunting. So I would definitely tell myself, persevere, be resilient, and you can get through anything. I would also tell myself to foster um, positive relationships with people and with mentors and with net and networks. I think that this really, really helps. If you're around people that believe in you, that see the, the world, life the way you do, and they are on the same kind of mindset as you, it's really helpful. If you're around those kinds of people, you will go further in life you will be able to overcome your struggles with the right people there. So I would tell myself that. Surround yourself with good people. Uh, success is not a linear path. And it's also not something you can do in isolation. So definitely be prepared for the ups and the downs. Surround yourself with good people. And also keep believing in yourself. Really kind of invest, invest things in you. What do you like to do? What's changing with the world? Um, really focus on that. Always remember what you like. Don't, don't be led astray. Like I said earlier, if you, are, you have a vision and you know where you want to go, it's so much easier to keep on that path. Um, if you don't have a vision, you can kind of wander around and follow people that maybe you shouldn't be following. So definitely invest in yourself too. It's really, really important. And those are my three things that I think I would probably say to 21-year-old Hannah. And to my children now, I do say these things to them too. So I wanted to 
to share with you a little about my business. It's named The Giggling Pig. And just the name alone makes you happy. It makes you laugh and it kind of creates curiosity as to what is The Giggling Pig. And in my future, the things I'm trying to kind of draw into my world now are to expand that, expand the excitement, expand the curiosity. And it's all really geared towards children and women in business. I've been able to take my one teeny tiny 350 square foot shop and produce a business that has expanded around the state and become a franchise. I have franchised it to five women so far and they're doing really, really well. And I think that once I saw that and I saw these women creating their own wealth and really changing their communities and making people's lives better and happier, it really made me feel pushed into doing this more, to sharing my story with people and showing them that they too can change their world, they can change other people's worlds and they can make the world a better place. Even if it's just a teeny tiny corner in the corner of Connecticut, they can do it. The world can be a better place. And so my focus is on that. It's on business expansion. It's on, it's on writing my story, my book, and to create more products. I've created a lot of products that are for children and apparel and art, art boxes and artwork. And I really, really enjoy it. So I feel like I'm on the right path. I'm, I'm doing the things I love and I'm gonna keep doing it. That is the goal, that's, that's the future for the giggling pig. And hopefully you'll soon one day see a giggling pig near you. I think there's a real problem in the world today where children are just so glued to technology. They're on their phones, they're on their iPads, they're zooming in, they're zooming out, but they're not being creative. And I think that with the Giggling Pig, we've kind of been able to provide other women um, and, and men um, and families and children with a place where they can come, they can create and they can be themselves and really tap into what the world can look like if you understand art. And for the future now, with the Giggling Pig and with all these women who are kind of coming to me and saying, hey, I need a change. COVID taught me that I don't want to be in the corporate world in the, anymore. People lost a lot of people during COVID. And I think they've really started to value their own time more and their own lives. So with the Giggling Pig, I'm able to show them that, hey, we've created this, this brand, this business that can really help change not only your life, but other people's lives too. And I think that that's the key is that it's not just about you. You're, you're pursuing something that helps other people and it's rewarding. It's rewarding to see that you can create change in your community. You can help create change in an individual's life and make people feel like they belong and they're happy. So the future for The Giggling Pig is really about that. And it's about letting women know and men know that, hey, you can own your own business, you can make your own money, you can be independent. You don't have to have all the money in the bank to start your business. You don't have to know everything before you get started. You can start right now, just like I did at 31 years old with my second child on my hip and no money in the bank. And it was kind of, you know what? I didn't want to have a plan B. I wanted to burn my bridges and really make everything on that island work for me. And I did. And it's possible. So being able to provide this business model to people and show them that, hey, I did it and, I've, and I know how hard it can be, but I've been there and I can help guide you through the process too and really show you how amazing it is when your life isn't just about you, it's about other people and bringing happiness to your community. <laughs> I can tell you that what I've really enjoyed about this process of the making of an entrepreneur is the new connections I've made. And also really kind of looking at my life and my story and being able to see what I've actually achieved because it's really rare that you sit down and you get to tell your story from start to finish. And, you, and, and it's not very often that you really kind of acknowledge all those things that you've been through, that you've overcome, your path has been up and down and round and round and you've been able to bounce back. And so it's nice to kind of give myself credit for that, to be able to say, yeah, I did it, I'm here. 
I'm on the making of an entrepreneur, and my daughter's watching me, my son's watching me, the most important people in the world are watching me, and I get to share it with new people and be able to really kind of take that into my future too and be able to show people um, what's possible. So this has been a really, really enjoyable experience for me. Um, even as a nervous, shy person, I've been able to come on camera and feel good about why I'm sharing this story and in hopes to help other people know that they can do it too. So that's kind of, that's kind of it for me. I'm really happy to be here and happy to share my story with you. Thank <laughs> you.